Alrighty. Good evening. Welcome to the Monday, February 22nd meeting of the Bella Vista City Council. We will start with the invocation by Pastor Jamie Alexander of the First United Methodist Church, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. We join me in prayer. Faithful God, we thank you that we have opportunity tonight to gather as a city and to bring before you the concerns. We ask you to bring wisdom and reverence and all that is needed for wisdom into our hearts and our minds. We ask you to bless our city. Bless us to be found faithful, sharing our love, working in harmony, and for better Benton County and Bella Vista. In the sovereign name of your Son, our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Together we say. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Jertz. Roll call, please. Okay, we'll call the roll. Alderman Morgan. Here. Alderman Flynn. Here. Alderman Anderson. Absent. Alderman King. Here. Alderman Wozniak. Here. Alderman Wilson. Here. Five All righty. The next is citizen input. We have six speakers on the list for the evening. I would remind each speaker that you have three minutes and Mr. Jertson has his magic clock here. Three. And uh, I'll give you 3.1, Paul. <laughs> um, and please, when you're addressing, do not repeat what the previous person has said, or I will stop you. We need to keep the ideas rolling and the fresh ideas uh, moving forward. So without any further ado, Debbie Richards, please. And you can use the microphone over there. Okay. Didn't their attorney? Um, I emailed. I, I received a, a phone call from Attorney Bill Watkins, who had represented the neighborhood group, asking if this was a possibility. Um, I believe under your rules as they are right now, it's really not permitted unless you suspend the rules to allow it, which you certainly have the right to do. Uh, so under the current rules, uh, each person gets three minutes. If you want to suspend that rule and, and uh, allow one person to speak for more than one person, that's within your purview. Um, I did provide you all uh, an email response with uh, the reasoning on all that here two, three days ago. I guess it was last Friday. Hope you all got it. Yeah. Uh, yes, I, yes, mm -hmm. we did. Uh, it, I understand that you're wanting to speak like nine minutes for three people. That's correct. I move that we suspend the rules and allow this gentleman nine minutes to make his presentation. Okay. I'll second that. Mm -hmm. roll call. Yep. All right, we'll do a roll call then on the vote. Alderman Wozniak? Yes. Alderman King? Yes. Alderman Flynn? Yes. Alderman Morgan? Yes. Alderman Wilson? Yes. Carry. Okay, Tom, you're going to speak for... <coughs> need to go to that microphone right there, sir. Do, you, sir, you've been recognized for nine minutes. You need to go to the microphone. Okay, so you're speaking for Debbie and yourself and Paul? Bev Curtis. Bev Curtis isn't on the list. I'm sorry? Sorry. I've got Barb Brooks. Barb Brooks. <coughs> okay. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll narrow it down here. All right, Tom. Just for you here that I'm going to pass out. Would you just give me the whole works and you go ahead and get started now? Yeah, we can pass right. these down. Oh, yeah, we can pass them down. Very cool. Hello, my name is Tom Richards, and I live at 62 Dogwood Drive in Bella Vista. Um, 
I'm a registered professional engineer in the state of Colorado, number 26403. I'm also registered with the National Council of Engineering Examiners, professional engineer number 10048. I'm providing you with information that should be considered and included in the Country Club Village PCD before you tonight. This information represents responsible development of this property and significantly more consistent with the intent of development of the PCD. Except for one item, this same listing has been previously provided in numerous meetings of our community development staff and planning board members. This information includes, number one, a dogwood drive count vehicle count summary information collected over a recent nine-day period. It will note that it includes my professional engineering seal not as a traffic engineer. It's limited to my engineering ability to accurately count cars using a device, doing junior high math, and presenting it fairly and accurately to you. The resulting hourly counts are conservative for the numerous reasons listed in the summary she provided. I should also mention that at this point the, the uh, device also does count pedestrians, but this was not included in the walkway nor any place that it would count pedestrians. But it is conservative, the numbers you will be seeing. Weekday holiday average counts for 299 vehicles per day, per day and weekday average counts for 375 vehicles per day. Combined with the anticipated post-development counts provided in the traffic letter by the applicant, the average anticipated post-development weekly weekday traffic count would be 832 vehicles per day. Fact, facts are amazingly powerful when used correctly. Again, I need to declare at this point, I'm going into to what could be called traffic engineering. But now I'm providing this information as a citizen, not as a professional traffic engineer. This data vehicle count information should be compared to the traffic letter provided by the applicant. Because at least five homes along Lower Dogwood Drive cannot, be, cannot contribute to the counts I provided, this means the Lower Dogwood Drive anticipated vehicle counts presented in the applicant's traffic letter should be reduced from 190 vehicles today to about 140 vehicles today in the counts I presented. When that count is considered against the actual homes along Lower Dogwood Drive, sorry, when that count is considered against the actual count of 409 vehicles per day, that means about 270 vehicles per day use Dogwood Drive that are not homes along Lower Dogwood Drive. In the, applica in the applicant's traffic letter, the associated vehicle counts presented assume that the number of vehicles used per day using Dogwood Drive from above Lower Dogwood Drive is zero. In reality, a correct assumption presented in the applicant's traffic letter it would be to assume one vehicle per day from those 275 homes use Lower Dogwood Drive. Using that number and other information provided in the applicant's traffic letter, it means about 460 vehicles per day would use Lower Dogwood Drive and approximately 920 vehicles per day would use Lower Dogwood Drive daily at the completion of the development. It should be used considering the application for benefits consistent with the Bella Vista Master Street Plan and the fact that the PCD code in place that falls to the most, to the most restrictive and conflicting codes regarding this street improvements. This number exceeds the traffic count of 700 vehicles per day, changing the street classification from a residential street to a subcollector street in a required right of way of 50 foot by definition. That's directed from the master street plan. We're also providing, in your packet, we're also providing landscaping plans for the development, including the entire common areas and homes completed as part of this construction. This is very consistent with what would be expected with any PZD anywhere. It is not to be considered three trees and a turf grass mix as a landscaping plan for 20 acre development, 48 homes. We are providing you that as a completed document. We are providing text that would not allow two units of the same style of home to be installed side by side along Dogwood Drive stating, the Stillwater Ponswood, Lincoln Evergreen, and Grand View model homes is provided for in this PCC, PZD will not be built side by side along Dogwood Drive. This would replace the statement provided by the applicant in this PZD. Though all buildings and structures shall adhere to a common architectural theme or style, 
The footprint of the home, the material utilized to create the facade of the home, and a number of different construction plans will be utilized so as to create a non-standard street view. No two homes shall be constructed immediately adjacent to that utilize the same three elements set forth in the previous sentence of the home immediately adjacent to it. My opinion that's way too complex. All we ask for is don't put two model homes side by side with the long dog wood drive. There's no reason to go into three sentences for that. The applicant is providing a trail, not a sidewalk on the west side of Dogwood Drive. We don't think this provides for responsible development, but the applicant is welcome to compromise their own development as they see fit. We expect a tree preservation plan consistent with the PZD provision stating that development minimally disrupts existing natural features. This plan must represent a legitimate effort to preserve the existing mature and irreplaceable trees. It is not a tree protection plan. Pre tree protection detail as provided in response to a previous very clear planning staff comment. We would expect that this exposed aggregate curves on the west side of Dogwood Drive. This is consistent with the PZD requirement to use design features that are compatible with the area. The slopes of the roofs, the slopes of the roofs that are presented in the current architectural plans are consistent with responsible development. Provide for Architectural and landscaping elements consistent with the architectural work, architectural work of Bay Jones, style present in the Country Club building commissioned by John Cooper Sr., very apparent in the former Billingsley home, and found in elements of some homes along with drive, including the natural and honest use of materials and elements, natural stone, flooring, slate, roof, stone wall, real wood, siding, flooring, shape roofs, etc., brick, large overhangs that protect the exterior siding and windows, Large windows with controlled views to the exterior, enforcing a connection between the inside and outside, undivided window panes. Maintain large trees and natural state of the site as much as possible. Use landscaping patios or side walls as the natural extension of the home to the side. Car storage, minimized or hidden, exterior lighting, highlighting, architectural elements, pathways, etc. The intention of developers to trail and make Trail and Greenway Master Plan must be considered at this time as an integral part of this development. It is, it is less than one year old and supported by John Cooper III and includes Chris Sunnison on the steering committee. It's called West Trail Number 22, Country Club Tail. It's planned to be completed in the next five to 10 years. The location of the, of the trail is presented as going through this parcel and its future Bellavis and regional amenity must be preserved. We will be donating our traffic counting device here used on need, based presented by a user. We welcome a request by the Bellavis Community Development Staff, Street Department, POA, and Mayor regarding this potential donation to be heard by any interested Dogwood Drive neighbors. And thank you very much, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. We still got 49 seconds, Tom. <laughs> okay. I'll be happy to any questions? Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you for the effort. We have something else, actually. This is from our training representative. I did have this. I hope I get this in in 30 seconds. We should forget writing traffic counts and road improvements. I'm going to read this section. I don't want to read this section. The applicant submitted what is called traffic study, but it's really more little, little, little more than an essay explaining how traffic flow estimates are reached. Um, the applicant said at the planning commission that table two does not mention traffic flow anywhere, and that is correct. But the types of streets, subcollectors, etc., as used in table two, are defined by the master street plan, and that definition is based on traffic count. Um, See, the developer must be required to dedicate a picture for right away as part of this process. If that does not two, if that does not happen, two things are likely to occur at some point. The city and therefore the taxpayer of Bella Vista will have to pay to upgrade Dogwood Drive, and the necessary right of way will be acquired from both sides of the street, which would include us and our neighbors. Thanks, Tom. Neither the taxpayer in general nor the existing homeowners along Dogwood Drive in particular should have to subtitle any part of this development. Any part of this development. Thank you. you ready? Is it Ken Katz? Yeah, my name is Ken Castle. 
of an 83,000-foot drive. After attending several of the planning committee meetings, it is apparent to me that Cooper and CEI have just worn down the planning staff and the planning committee. To illustrate my point, at the January planning committee meeting, the chairman asked that a landscaping plan be submitted. And in fact, CEI did submit a landscaping plan, and I quote, landscaping. Each individual unit shall provide two trees in the front yard and one tree in the backyard. Selected from the recommended landscaping material listed in Municipal Code Section 109-221. As the mayor said at the last planning meeting, they have met the minimum requirements. However, I don't believe that the planning staff and the planning committee only expected one sentence to cover the landscaping plan. Any plan that I would envision includes shrubs, especially around the area of heating and air conditioning units which if you go to their similar development in Rogers, they do not have shrubs around their units, and they are truly ugly. And I am assuming the air conditioning units will be on the back of the house. No air conditioning units are shown on any of the plans. And the back of 22 of the lots are on the golf course. This will impress visitors. I would envision that such a plan would address if the yards are going to be rock or grass. I would envision the plan would identify where the major utility boxes are located and how they would landscape around them. On my lot, I have a huge utility box, but the Coopers that built my house put the berm around the three sides so that it was not visible from the road. I would envision that the retention pond would have some shrubs around it and some description as to what the base is going to be, perhaps a rock. One of them is going to be directly across the street from me. What am I going to see? Then there was a matter of trees. A couple of plans back, we were told they were only going to take out one tree. Now, with this latest submission, the plan is show that they're going to try and save eight trees out of the 33 that are on their property. Now, I'm not a tree hugger, but these are mature trees that enhance what a visitor sees when they visit the country club. Again, I believe that Cooper and CEI just wore down the planning staff and the planning committee. They met the minimum requirements. I'm sure the planning staff learned a lot from this submittal, and they should be rewriting sections for future development. What I have pointed out will not be enough to change any vote on this council. As you will be told, they have met the minimum requirements. Thank you, Mr. Castle. Roger Norbeck. My name is Roger Norbeck, 61 Portsmouth Drive. I uh, have been a a resident full-time in Bell Vista for about 16 years now and we first bought our original lot about uh, 50 years ago. Uh, the reason I'm here is because an article is appearing in the newspaper and I don't know that anything is going to be done but I, I want to give a couple examples of why this struck me and I wanted to address it. When we built our house we never got an inspection, we never had uh, a uh, occupancy uh, letter so after six months to nine months we just moved in and uh, a year later somebody came around and gave us one there ought to be some uh, policy there ought to be something that is done on a regular basis then uh, i had a uh, deck made next to the house i had uh, two lots and there, i uh, requested uh, a uh, permit and I was denied a permit for that. Why, why was it denied? They said, well, you're gonna have to go and get a uh, waiver of easement, and then uh, we'll look at it and see if we'll approve it. So, now this was a three foot piece of wood. I could have stepped on the ground and I wouldn't have done this, but I keep out of trouble. I went and I got a, uh, I went to apply for a waiver of easement. Uh, Cooper charged me like 300 bucks, and uh, I said, well, when are you going to come out and inspect? They said, well, oh, it's all done now. You can go and do what you want to do. Uh, no inspection, no. No other area was out. Then I asked, what about my boat gun? Uh, that hasn't been inspected. And I was told by the POA, and I was told by, uh, well, we don't inspect boat guns. So I had to pay for a permit. I had to get my money for it and get an inspection on Anyway, 
there's been a lot of things like that. What struck me in the paper here is between the ACC, the POA, uh, the city, the planning commission, I don't know if we, how well all this has been thought out, but on the front page of the paper, and I've seen so much stuff like this over the years, you're talking about an accessory building on a lot. Oh, it's a little too high, or it's uh, a little bit too much in square footage. Well, in the past, this never would have gotten past, period. It wouldn't even been a consideration. But now, on my street, I live on Fort Smoke Drive, and I hope some of you, if not all of you, uh, it's less than a mile long, just drive down it, it loops around, comes back. And see if anything looks out of place there. Well, there's one building that was put up not long ago. I thought they were building an apartment house. And the other one, it looks bigger. These are higher, bigger, and I would be willing to bet there's people on the board that don't have as much square footage as these accessory buildings. Thank you, Mr. Norbeck. Just a quick question. When did you apply for all these permits and, and the building of your house was That's when? 15 years ago. Oh, okay. But please <laughs> go and look at those buildings in Fort Smoke Drive and won't have to describe it to you. You can't miss them. Thank you, sir. The last speaker this evening is Paul Burris. <coughs> Oh, it, it did start. <laughs> it's rolling, Tom. It's rolling. All right, it's rolling. My name is Paul Burris, 67 Dogwood Drive. A year ago, the Dogwood neighbors sought to meet with the city and Cooper Homes to create a dialogue to ensure a good, well thought out subdivision. We were not against it then or now, as inferred by the mayor last week in his unprecedented appearance at the Planning Commission meeting. At our first meeting with Cooper, we were told it's all about the money. That was our attitude then and now. In December, the planning department asked the developer for a sidewalk on the west side of Dogwood Drive. What did the planning department get? Sidewalk? No. A dirt trail? Yes. And what was the reason? We were told by the planning director we didn't get a sidewalk. At that time, he told us they were afraid we'd fall off in the ditch that were leaving along Dogwood Drive. Right. Now, the mayor and planning director both on more than one occasion promised us Dogwood Drive would be improved before any permit was issued or dirt turned and by improved, resurfaced, repaired, and so forth and paid for by the developer. Not just brought up to coal by adding two feet on the west side of Dogwood Drive. You have to remember Dogwood, Cooper has never dedicated Dogwood Drive That's right. until now. I've lived on the street 17 years and I don't recall it's ever been resurfaced. The street's in terrible condition and I hope you've all driven down it. Yet by accepting this cemental, the planning department, the planning commission, the mayor, and the city council is approved. We'll say, okay, dedicate this road to the city of Bella Vista, and we'll allow the tech taxpayers to pay the expense for all the repairs. This is not a terribly expensive uh, effort for this size project, but it is an effort to do the right thing, which the developer refuses to do. Remember, this is your only opportunity to have the developer share in the cost of the infrastructure, something they do not want to do, and I'm sure if it was any other developer, they'd be made to do it. Because it's not all about the money. It is about the safety and ensuring that a well thought out subdivision is built. Plus, this is our first PCD. We need to get it right now and for the future. As this submittal is terribly flawed, and by no means should the normal three readings of this submittal be waived. There are too many discrepancies for it to even be before you tonight. We respectfully request you amend this submittal to the planning commission. Thank but you, Mr. Burris. Alrighty. 
We'll move along to the approval of the minutes of the January 25th meeting. Are there any errors or omissions? Okay, we'll do it by show of hands. All in favor? Oh, sorry. We have a motion. Now let's have a motion. Yeah. Motion to accept. Second. Okay, now we'll do the show of hands. All in favor? Opposed? Carry. Carry. Thank you. We send out a monthly financial report. The treasurer sent it out last week. Hopefully you've all had a chance to look at it. Are there any errors or missions or questions? And again, by Need a roll motion. call vote motion. after a motion, we will proceed. Motion to approve the financials? So moved. Second. Second. Alan, thank you. Alderman Morgan. Yes. Alderman Flynn. Yes. Alderman Anderson is not here. Alderman King. Yes. Alderman Wozniak. Yes. Alderman Wilson. Yes. Carry five zero. Thank you. I'd entertain a motion to suspend the rules and read all ordinances and resolutions on the agenda by title only. So moved. Second. Okay. Alderman King. Yes. Alderman. Flynn. Yes. Alderman Morgan. Yes. Alderman Wilson. Yes. Alderman Wozniak. Yes. Carry 5-0. Thank you. The first ordinance, amending the code of ordinances of the City of Bella Vista to establish a Bella Vista Arts Council to define its membership, purpose, powers, and duties, and for other purposes. This is the third and final reading. Discussion? I entertain a motion to approve, please. So moved. Second. Second. Alderman Flynn. Yes. Alderman Wozniak. Yes. Alderman Morgan. Yes. Alderman King. Yes. Alderman Wilson. Yes. Carry it by zero. The next ordinance is accepting and confirming rights of way dedicated to the public for memorial drive and for other purposes. This is the third and final reading. Discussion? Questions? I'd entertain a motion to approve, please. So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. All right. Alderman Morgan. Yes. Alderman Flynn. Yes. Alderman Wozniak. Yes. Alderman King. Yes. Alderman Wilson. Yes. Carry five there. Thank you. Amending the code of ordinances of the city of Bella Vista to provide for an electronic funds payment policy. Councilor, would you like to address this? Uh, we spoke about this uh, at the work session. <clears throat> what this uh, new section of code would do would uh, meet our requirements in state law and allow the city to uh, basically develop a policy to pay bills by electronic funds transfer without having to cut a check. In order to do that, uh, we have to approve uh, that by ordinance and a policy has to be developed that is approved by the uh, department or the uh, Joint Legislative Auditing Committee, who's our auditor. So this is what this will do. Um, this will allow the city treasurer to develop a procedure uh, to ensure that internal accounting controls and adequate documentation of electronic payments are made and that the procedure will be approved by the auditing committee. And then once that's done, we'll be able to uh, legally handle uh, electronic funds transfer to pay bills. Alrighty. And we do need to get this moving. so. Uh, uh, I believe on behalf of our treasurer, I would request that you uh, expedite the consideration of this proposal. Alrighty. Are we able to move this to third and final reading without the policy in place? Yes, um, the, yes. the ordinance Sorry. allows the treasurer okay. to develop right. a policy. Right. So the, everything you need is in place to move Any forward. other questions? And I'd entertain a motion to suspend the rules for third and final reading. To move to third and final reading, yes. So moved. Second. Okay. Alderman Wilson. Yes. Alderman King. Yes. Alderman Wozniak. Yes. Alderman Flynn. Yes. Alderman Morgan. Yes. Carry five zero. I'll now do the third and final reading, amending the code of ordinances of the city of Bella Vista to provide for an electronic funds payment policy. 
Thank you. Second. Second. All in favor, we'll do a roll call. Alderman Flynn? Yes. Alderman Wozniak? Yes. Alderman King? Yes. Alderman Wilson? Yes. Alderman Morgan? Yes. Carried, 5-0. Thank you. The next ordinance is amending the City of Bella Vista zoning ordinance and map by rezoning certain lands commonly known as Benton County parcels 16-70216-002 and 16-70226-001 from R1, a residential single family, and a portion of Benton County Parcel 16-70222-000 from P1, open space, to PZD, planned zoning district, for the Country Club, Villas Development, and for other purposes. Discussion? By the rezoning, we are not in any way confirming the plans that they have on the board. We're just changing the zoning so they can proceed? That is correct. Okay. No. Well, well, they'll have to come back with a plat before they're allowed to build the, any homes and issue permits. The, the, Is that the, your question? The plan zoning district must conform to the plans and drawings that you have that they have provided right. in their application. So it will look like this. It will be laid out like this. It, it, but was your question about actually building the homes? No, my question was by re allowing the rezoning, they can proceed because they've had they've permitted. Them, I'm getting them not a because okay, I'm not hearing anything that makes me real confident in what they've laid out. If we approve, it means that the developer will be able to put in the infrastructure, such as digging and preparing the land, that type of thing, but they will not be permitted to build a house. Okay. Okay. Other questions? Well, I, um, I, I know this has been beat around for a while. But I was wondering about the idea of moving it to third and final reading. And I always thought the point of having three readings was when there was something controversial, you know, to give people time to study it and, and uh, think it through and make sure, you know, we know we're doing the right thing. I, I'm not necessarily against it, but I'm not confident right now that we should go to the third reading. Okay. Other comments? One other question. Um, since we, as a city, don't own Dogwood Drive, that's right. And this is going to give it basically give it over to us by reason in the rezoning. They're going to the entire road in the process of the, of the development. They're basically going to give us the, the zone, the street. Mm -hmm. Do we want it? Well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you got we're, much we're working to resurface a lot of streets <laughs> now. If they want to build a development and they haven't touched the thing for how many years, perhaps they should uh, cough it up and fix it themselves. Okay. Yeah. We've, we've got a lot of streets of our own that we do own that need to be taken care of. I hear a but. As we entered into uh, becoming a city, uh, you will find that we have uh, incurred obligations I beg to differ. We are I need not, to add as a general something. rule, <laughs> repaving yes. and resurfacing that road, are we, Councilor? I, I, I want to add something. I don't know about what's happened in the past, but I think it poses a legal issue for the city taxpayer dollars to be used to improve private roads. That includes filling potholes. That includes scraping the ice off. 
Uh, and so whenever that question has come up, we, when we took the city streets over, I don't think anyone did a comprehensive search to see, well, what's the technical status of this particular street? I mean, we just took care of the streets. As these issues have come up, we've had reason to research these things. And this has come up in another development here in town where we discovered that they had never been, pro never been dedicated to the public. And when that's the case, I don't think we can legally do anything with them. Okay. Repair them, clean them, anything. Oops. And so um, uh, if dogwood is in fact private, then my advice is gonna be, we're not gonna be able to do anything with it going forward unless it becomes a city street. Right. So um, whether that means that they're gonna do something first before we take it over, that's up, that's up to you, I suppose. But I just wanna make sure you're aware of that. You may want to look into Paul. Paul. That's out of order. Paul, Paul you're out, out of order. order. Paul, you're out of order. Well, perhaps we need to look into a shared cost issue with the developer as an initial start. Okay. Any other comments? In other words, in other words, get it brought up to a safe and decent, you know, safe road condition, a grade A condition, where they call it on the charts, and then. We could take it over from there, but not completely on city's dime to start out with. Okay. Well, if I had my choice between who was going to be in charge of the street, I would choose the city over the ACC. Well, that's not my argument, Dr. Well, yeah. as, a, as, we, as far as been, who can get anything done. Apparently, we've been done. plowing it all in the wintertime anyway. Am I correct? Yeah. Sure. Well, if it gets plowed. But, uh, okay. But as far as making it, bringing it up to standards, I think that should be a shared cost with the developer. He wants to put a subdivision there? Cool. Aren't you going to want to have a nice street surface there for the people to see when they come in, come in to look at those homes to buy? Then kick in some money and bring it up. They've been neglecting it for how many years now? Okay. Well, I just wanted to make one comment as head of the uh, street committee. Uh, I know that uh, uh, Mr. Button has a... a uh, a policy of waiting till construction is done to pave streets for obvious reasons because uh, they just get torn up during the construction. Mm -hmm. so. <coughs> so the paving of the street would come last <coughs> in any event. So if we bring the street up, then we're going to have construction vehicles going all over the street. It doesn't matter when it's done, Mayor. It's a matter of them sharing the cost of doing it. Okay. <coughs> right. Or getting it done when this construction is done. Then we'll take it, then they can say, okay, it's yours now. And we'll say thank you. We'll take care of it from here. But you bring it up to where we don't have to do a considerable amount of work to bring it up to code. Bring it up to a safe level first. Okay. It's your street. Before we take it over. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Before right. uh, that's what I'm saying. If, until the construction is done, fine. You don't want to trash what you just fixed. When the construction is done, the developer should be responsible to bring the street up to a Consider you know, a correct level, what do they call it, grade one or grade A or whatever they call it? I'm going to find out. Uh, just to, to throw a little light on the construction process when we're doing land development, um, one of the first things to go in is the infrastructure, is the water lines, the sewer lines, the street infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, and then in this process, homes are built, which is the, uh, all the construction traffic from that. The ordinance that was in front of this evening provides for a three year period in which all of that construction occurs. So, when you're really talking about bringing that road up to. Um, it's going to be a couple years down the road, yeah. I understand. I understand. Okay. But I still believe that if they're going to do that as a development. Yeah, I take no issue with your argument. So yeah. I understand. I'm not worried about the time frame here. I'm not worried about the. The, you know the technical part of the construction I'm just saying that as a city do we want to go in and take over the responsibility of cleaning up someone else's property again we've been doing it for a lot of years any other comments so if he wanted to move forward at this would this be a motion council if you want to move it ahead it's like you move it the second reading or third and final reading whatever Okay. Whatever your desires are. Mr. King? I would say we hold off on the third and final until we get this threatened out. Okay. I'm a John on that. If there's if there's no motion to suspend the rules, it just it'll go to second reading next month. Okay. 
<clears throat> is that the will of the council? Yes. Sounds yes. like it. Okay. All righty. We'll have second reading. The first resolution of the evening is appointing Doug Farner to position one on the Planning Commission. Any discussion? Mr. Farner, I believe, is here this evening. If there are any questions for him, <laughs> you're hiding, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you are. Well, I think he has a good background and would be a good person for the position. Uh, Mr. Farner, I appreciate your enthusiasm and willingness to serve our city. I think Mr. Farner will be a great addition to the Planning Commission. Alrighty, I'd entertain a motion to approve the resolution, please. So, so moved. Second. So, <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> gotta make sure the clerk got all that somewhere. <laughs> <Yep>. Okay. <laughs> okay. Alderman Morgan. Yes. Alderman Flynn. Yes. Alderman Wozniak. Yes. Alderman King. Yes. Alderman Wilson. Yes. Carry five zero. Okay. The next resolution authorizing the mayor and the city clerk to enter into a contract with Superior Auto Group of Salem Springs pursuant to a state procurement contract for the purchase of three Ford Interceptor Sport Utility Vehicles, two Dodge Charger Pursuit Vehicles, and one Chevrolet Equinox all-wheel drive vehicle in the amount of $145,000, $145,850 plus $39,150 for equipment add-ons for usage by the police department. Um, Chief Farmer, I believe you're here. Yep. Oh, you're hiding behind Doug Farner. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, this is normal turnaround of the vehicles. There were five purchased back in, was it 2010, Chief? And this is regular rotation? Right. Right. The plan was to try and get the police department vehicles up to 33% with either all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive and with the addition of these vehicles plus the ones we purchased last year and the existing we will now meet that goal so that in the event of snow or even some other disaster we will have vehicles hopefully that will be able to go everywhere that they need to go to protect our citizens. Are there any questions? And this is in our budget. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'd entertain a motion to approve, please. So moved. Second. Okay. Alderman Wilson. Yes. Alderman King. Yes. Alderman Wozniak. Yes. Alderman Flynn. Yes. Alderman Morgan. Yes. Carried by Thank you. The next resolution, setting vendor fees for access to the Bella Vista Farmers Market for 2016. Um, I see that Allison Archer is here this evening. If we have any questions about it, Allison is the coordinator of the Farmers Market. <laughs> Are there any questions or discussion? If not, I'd entertain a motion to approve, please. So moved. Second. Okay. Alderman Morgan. Yes. Alderman Flynn. Yes. Alderman Wozniak. Yes. Alderman King. Yes. Alderman Wilson. Yes. Carried by zero. Okay. The next resolution adjusting the 2016 operating budget for general improvement fund grant program revenue and for other purposes. If you remember at the work session, this is $41,000 that we received from the General Improvement Fund and it will be going against the HAWC, and I can't remember what the acronym stands for, High Intensity. Oh, you got it, good. <laughs> this is a crosswalk that is going to be installed between Cooper Elementary over Dar uh, Dartmoor and over towards the soccer field area and it'll be activated by pressing a button and four million lights go off and um, it will certainly be an improvement to what's there today. 
Any questions or thoughts? I'd entertain a, a resolution to approve, please. So moved. Second. All right, Alderman Morgan? Yes. Alderman Flynn? Yes. Alderman Wozniak? Yes. Alderman King? Yes. Alderman Wilson? Yes. <coughs> Carrie? Thank you. The next resolution authorizing the mayor and city clerk to enter into a contract with Hooten Equipment Company in the amount of $186,760.29 for the construction of fuel depot facility at the new street department building. Uh, this went out to bid. This was the low bid that came back from two companies that submitted bids. Um, as we have discussed, this fuel facility will be not only for street vehicles, but it will be for uh, the police and some of the fire vehicles. It will also provide diesel for us as well. Um, it is not a short-term saving. It is a long-term saving, but we will save money because we will be buying fuel on a state contract. Are there any questions? All righty, I'd entertain a, a, a motion to approve, please. So moved. Second. Discussion, Mayor. We so don't have to buy the gas under the state contract. We can go out and bid it ourselves. And my ears on the corn court, the county went out many times and bid on ourselves and even beat the state bid. So we can shop around for where we get the gas. That's true. Which will be considerably cheaper than what you get it at the pumps, especially if it goes back up. And we're buying at the pump today. Like especially when it goes back. Okay. All right. Alderman Wilson. Yes. Alderman King. Yes. Alderman Wozniak. Yes. Alderman Flynn. Yes. Alderman Morgan. Yes. Carry five zero. Thank you. The next resolution authorizing the mayor and the city clerk to enter into a contract with first employment staffing in an amount not to exceed $66,500 to provide personnel for seasonal right-of-way mowing. This is something that we do every year. We hire temps um, and we have the mowers. We have six this year and um, that money is in the budget. Are there any questions? I'd entertain a motion to approve, please. So moved. Second. Right. Second. <laughs> Alderman Wozniak. Yes. Alderman King. Yes. Alderman Flynn. Yes. Alderman Morgan. Yes. Alderman Wilson. Yes. Carrie. Thank you. Next resolution authorizing the mayor and the city clerk to enter into a contract with Scott Equipment Company in the amount of $32,789 for the purchase of a new asphalt roller. Uh, this again is the lowest bid. Uh, this will be our second roller that we will have in the inventory uh, and it will certainly help as we start to address the streets. Any questions? Alrighty, I'd entertain a motion to approve the resolution, please. So moved. Second. All right, Alderman Morgan. Yes. Alderman Flynn. Yes. Alderman Wozniak. Yes. Alderman King. Yes. Alderman Wilson. Yes. Carrie. Five zero. Thank you. The last resolution of the evening authorizing the mayor and the city clerk to enter into a contract with Admiral Express in an amount not to exceed twenty-eight thousand dollars for the purchase of furniture for the new street department building. This too was let out to bid, um, and we have chosen Admiral Express for this business. Are there any questions, queries? I'd entertain a motion to approve this resolution, please. So moved. Second. All right, Alderman Wilson. Yes. Alderman King. Yes. Alderman Morgan. Yes. Alderman Flynn. Yes. Alderman Wozniak. Yes. Carried by the all right, that's the end of the resolutions and ordinances. Uh, is there any further discussion on any topic? Okay, meetings and announcements. The next City Council work session will be Monday, March 1st at 530 in the City Hall Conference Room. The next regular meeting of the City Council will be Monday, March 28th 
right here at 6.30 p.m. The Planning Commission work session will be Thursday, March the 3rd at 4.30 in the City Hall Conference Room. Planning Commission regular meeting will be March 14th at 6.45 in the City Hall Conference Room. The Public Safety Committee will be at 9 o'clock, sorry, on March the 9th at 9 o'clock in the morning in the City Hall Conference Room. And tomorrow we will be hosting two sessions at City Hall inviting city, sorry, public input into the redesign of Reardon Road from Highway 71 down to just past uh, the Iberia Bank or the former Iberia Bank. We uh, are having our first session at 2.30 in the afternoon for two hours, and that'll be at City Hall. And, and then, I think it's 2.30, is it not, Chris? Is it 2 o'clock? My two, apologies. Two it's and 2 until 4. It's 6.30 at night until 8.30 tomorrow night as well. So there are two opportunities. So if you'd like to come to both, you're more than welcome to do so. But we do hope that people will show up. And please, please, we do need your comments on this because we cannot do it alone. That's it. We are adjourned. Thank you. Yeah, it is. It is. I'm going to go down. Hi. Okay. Sorry.